Barakata Yehoa, Barakata Yehoa Shai, Kohola Yama Yehoa, Bahasham Yehoa Shai, Baracha Hakwadash, which means all praises to Yehoah is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name, Yehoah Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Baracha Hakwadash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, the only way can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And um, a Shabbat Shalom as well. We're just sitting here and meditating on a couple of things, you know, and um, Spirit hop on me to put a couple of precepts together. So without further ado, we're just going to hop right into the lesson. Lord willing to set up fine. We're going to start off in Romans, the second chapter and the last two verses. This is Romans 2 and 28. It says, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. And it's going into what? You know, it's going into guys walking around with a uh, um, um, fringes every goddamn well. You know, some of all, if you ain't got your fringes on, you ain't going to be saved. You know, guys walking around thinking that this this is a show. Like it says in the book of Matthew, how the uh, scribes and Pharisees, men, how they preach. How they uh, pray on the outside, how they give alms in front of everybody, man. Because why? Because they, they pretty much want the praise of men and not the praise of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. Because they, they think this is a show to be seen, right? Verse 29, it says, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, you see, but of the heavenly father, man. So a true Israelite is that of the spirit, man. It's that in the mind, you know. First and foremost, you have to be. Uh, you got you got your Christians and vocab a pop up. Oh, see, nah, dog. First and foremost, you have to be an Israelite according to the flesh. First and foremost, man. And if you're an Israelite according to the flesh, then uh, you're able to have uh, 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 to be an Israelite inwardly, you know, in the spirit, because it's a mindset. It's a uh, it's a way of life, you know. How you live and how you see uh, 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 this world, man. The scripture speaks about this present evil world. Ezekiel 9 and 4 speaks about uh, uh, men that sign and cry for all the abominations that's done in the midst of, man. You know? So we see in all the atrocities and the things that's, that, that's going on in this present evil world, man, we ought to hate this place. So what well, what manner of men ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness, like it says in the book of Peter? Seeing that all these things is about to be destroyed, seeing that the Lord is coming back with great wrath. You know, but it says circumcision is that of the heart and in the spirit and not in the letter whose praises of men, not a uh, slack it, whose praise is not of men, but of the most high. So let's go to Jeremiah, the fourth chapter in the fourth verse. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter four and verse four. And it reads. Circumcise yourselves to Yahweh Basham Yahushai and take away the foreskins of your heart. You see, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. So we have to circumcise what? The foreskin of our heart. Now, being uncircumcised, meaning what? You're being, you're living like the heathen. That's why the Lord gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision to separate us from uh, 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 the heathen, man. Along with the law, statutes, and commandments that was given to Moses in Mount Sinai to give unto the children of Israel, to give unto us. You see? So that was to separate us from them. But uh, us having an uncircumcised heart is what, man? Us living after these heathen, man. Us following the same ways that these heathen do. That's why Jeremiah 10 and 10. It's Jeremiah 10 and 10, 10 and 10. It's Jeremiah 10 and um, 1. It says, hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. That's having that uncircumcised heart, man. It's living like a heathen. That's why in the book of 1 Maccabees, it says what? This is first Maccabees. These are a couple of scriptures that that's, that's not even written on the list, but uh, we gonna flow in the spirit. You know, it's the new moon Shabbat, so why not? This is a uh, first Maccabees one 
and verse 13. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at 11. It says, in those days went there out of, of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen, right? They learn in the way of the heathen right there that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so far herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem, according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised. You see, and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So that's why circumcision is that of the heart is of the mind is of the spirit. You serving Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai in truth and in sincerity. You living according to the word directly and correctly, because anything outside of that, you're considered uncircumcised. And that's why in the book of Jeremiah, the ninth chapter, this is Jeremiah 9 and verse 25. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised. They're, they're, they're heathens, right? And all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. So when you go back to the scribes and Pharisees, they were called the circumcision. Why? Because they were circumcised within their flesh, but yet they were uncircumcised in their spirit. Why? Because they wasn't following after the Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah in truth and in sincerity. So you got guys who know they're Israelites today. You got guys who are circumcised in the flesh, but yet they're not circumcised in their heart. That's why Paul wrote in Romans, the second chapter that we started with. It says that Israel, a, a true Israelite is that of the mind man, the circumcision of the heart. So let's go back to Jeremiah four and four. It says, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quit you because of the evil of your doings. That's why in the book of Deuteronomy, this is Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 16. It says, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked. So that's what we must do. We must circumcise the foreskin of our heart. Now, how do we do that? Well, just like how we physically get circumcised. How would we physically get circumcised? Now, in the book of uh, Joshua, right? This is Joshua 5 and verse 2. Let me get straight to the point. It says, at that time, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai said unto Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. So you will get what? You would get sharp stones and sharp knives and you would do what? You would cut the foreskin of your flesh, man, literally. But how do we get circumcised in our heart? This is Hebrews 4. In verse 12, it says, for the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. You see, piercing even to the defining asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There it is right there, man. That's why in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, the 16th verse, it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High. This is the word of the Lord. It's quick and powerful than any, uh, and sharper than any two-edged sword, right? All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's why Paul wrote and said, what we die daily. Each and every day, we should be killing off more and more of that old nigga, man. More and more of this flesh, more and more of these desires that pull us uh, 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 to carnal lust. And strive each and every day more and more to walk according to the spirit. That's circumcising our hearts, right? So, uh, now I'm going to just run down a couple uh, of these um, scriptures I got written down. So I'm just going to it. This is Romans 12. Because it all uh, coincides with the circumcision of our heart, which is what? Of our mind. This is Romans 12 and 2. It says, 
I'll start at one. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. That word conformed, con means with, form means a, 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 a image. So be not with the image or be not with the form of this world, right? But be ye transformed, changing who you are, right? By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. You see, it says with the renewing of your mind, meaning what? According to this, to this word, this is wisdom of Solomon, the ninth chapter. And let's start at the 10, the 10th verse. It says, let's start at nine. It's wisdom of Solomon nine and nine. It says, cause it said Romans 12, it says that we may prove what is that good and acceptable will of the Lord. So we may know what's pleasing unto the Lord. How do we know that? This is wisdom of Solomon nine and nine. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works and was present when thou madest the world and knew what was acceptable in thy sight. You see, let's go back to Romans 12, Romans 12 and two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good, that acceptable and perfect will of the Lord. So let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon nine and nine. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works and was present when thou madest the world and knew what was acceptable in thy sight and right in thy commandments. O send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then shall I judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. For what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High? Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul in the earthly tabernacle. Slocky. In the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. Meaning what? It's talking about this flesh. It says, and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth, and with labor do we find the things that are before us, but the things that are in heaven, who has searched out? And thy counsel, who hath known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above? For so the ways of them which were which lived on the earth were reformed. Romans 12, transformed, right? And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee and were saved through wisdom. Through what? Through the Holy Spirit. Because verse 17, wisdom of Solomon 9 and 17. And thy counsel who have known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. So it's the Holy Spirit of, uh, of, of wisdom, man. You know, this wisdom that we have, the breath of life, the Holy Spirit is one and the same. It says what uh, at the end of um, Luke, if I'm not mistaken. So like it. let me grab this real quick. Um, Luke 22. It's not 22. Luke. It's not Luke. Um, is it Matthew? So I can bear with me. Yeah, this is um, Spirit told me John at first, and I'm, I said in my mind, no, it ain't John. <laughs> and it is John. This is um, St. John. To, and, it, and, and that's a perfect, they, the perfect, the, the earthly tabernacle presses down the mind, man. 
Salakia. Um, this is St. John 20 and uh, verse 21. Then said Yahweh shot to them again, peace be unto you, as my father have sent me, even so send I you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. That's why Wisdom of Solomon 7 says what? It's Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes and go through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High. You see? So Yahweh shall breathe on the disciples and they receive the Holy Spirit. That's the breath. That's the inspiration. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High, a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no undefiled thing fall into her, you know? So through the Holy Spirit is how our, our, our hearts are circumcised. It says the ways of men were reformed and men were taught, taught the things that are pleasing unto the Lord. Because it spoke about what? How this, this, this flesh, this earthly tabernacle, Way of down the, uh, 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 the spirit, man. That's why we can't lean into our own understanding. This is uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know? So that's why we lean upon Yahweh Basham Yahusha. This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 3. In verse 5. It says, trust in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes, fear Yahweh and depart from evil. You see, so we can't lean into our own understanding. We got to apply these words, man. This is Isaiah 55 and verse seven. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon, you know? So we have to forsake our own thoughts. We have to forsake our own mind and apply our uh, our mind to uh, uh, to, to, to the uh, 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 words of Yahweh by Yahweh Shai, to the words of the Holy Spirit. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It says, walk in the spirit, you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we have to strive to, matter of fact, this is Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I'm going to start at 4. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one Lord, which in the Hebrew is Shammai, Yasha'ala, Yahweh, Allah, Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad, right? It says, and thou shalt love Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai, thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. That's the first commandment. It says, in these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, in our mind. This is how our hearts are circumcised. It says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Verse 8, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, meaning what? Everything we put our hand forth to do, this word, should be within our minds, man. That's that's what it said when it says uh, when it's set upon our hand, it's wrapped around our hand. Basically, whatever we go and perform, whatever we do, the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh is within our spirit to make sure that we're performing the right work. Make sure we're not doing things that's 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 against the scriptures. It says, "And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes." Meaning what? As spiritual glasses. Everything is seen through the spirit. That's why in Wisdom of Solomon in the sixth chapter, this is Wisdom of Solomon six. And 16, straight to the point. For she, she being wisdom, goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways and meeteth them in every thought. So that is what we got to strive to get to, man. Where uh, uh, everything we, we we put our hand to do, we walk out the door. We're thinking about what uh, the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. You know, praying to the Lord to allow us to deliver us to our destination safely. You know, in every in in, in any situation we might find ourselves in, 
you know? So from there, let's get uh, Acts the third chapter. Because in Malachi the third, uh, is the third chapter, I believe it's the third chapter, it says that um, the book of remembrance was written for those that feared the Lord, man. So the same men who, who were repenting, who were uh, uh, following Yahweh, why Yahweh shot back then, is the same men who are going to be doing the same things today. Now, this is Acts, the third chapter, the 19th verse. It says, repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So during this time, Peter, I believe it's Peter. Yeah, I believe it is Peter. Peter was speaking and he was saying, look, man, hey, hey you men repent. So in the latter times, you may uh, be forgiven that you may receive salvation. It says, verse 20, and he shall send Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which the most, which the most high has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your power raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Meaning what? These words meant, Lord, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It says, yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Of what? The days that we're living in today. It says, Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which the Most High made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed, meaning all Israelites. Unto you first, the Most High, having raised up his son, Yahweh Shai, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That's why in the book of Sirach, it tells us this. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 17. And verse 24, it says, but unto them that repent, he granteth them return and comforted those that fail in patience. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. That's all we can do. You know, a just man falleth seven times, but he, he picketh himself up again. Right? All we can do, you know, it says, verse 26, turn again to the most high. And turn away from iniquity. Circumcise your, your, the, the foreskin of your heart. Be no more stiff-necked. Right? It says, For he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health, and hate thou abomination vehemently. It says what? Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that's done in the midst thereof. You see? So from there, let's get second address. The 14th chapter. Let's start at the 34th verse. It says, therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. This is Ezra speaking to the people during that time, right? It says, therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding, right? Lean not to your own understanding, as it says in Proverbs, and reform your hearts. Be ye transformed with the renewing of your mind. Ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. So the same thing Peter told the people during his time is the same thing Ezra is telling the people during his time. So the same men that repented during all these different lifetimes is the same men who are going to repent today. So we must continue to have that same mindset. It says, verse 35, for after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. You see? Let's jump back to uh, uh, 2nd Andrews 13 and um, 54. It says, for thou hast forsaken. This is the angel. This is uh, uh, Yahweh Basham Yahusha through the angel speaking unto Andrews. For thou hast forsaken thy own way and applied thy diligence unto my law and sought it. This is what Andrews did. We must do what, man? You know, apply that same mind. Because this is Baruch. 
What does the scriptures tell us, man? This is Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30. It says, For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. This is us remembering ourselves, circumcising the foreskin of our hearts, right? And shall know that I am the Lord, their power, for I give them in heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord, you know. So Job 8 and 8, it says, prepare thyself for the search of thy fathers. So we could follow it after the example of our righteous forefathers, man, you know. And we could forsake the ways of our wicked forefathers. You see, let's go back to second address 13 and 54. For thou hast forsaken thy own way and applied thy diligence unto my law and sought it. Thy life has thou ordered in wisdom and has called understanding thy mother. And therefore have I showed thee the treasures of the highest. After other three days, I will speak other things unto thee and declare unto thee mighty and wondrous things. So Ezra was showed uh, 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 the secrets of the Lord. Because why? Because he sought after the Lord. He forsook his own way. It's the same thing as us. Forsaking our own way, forsaking our own wicked thoughts, applying our diligence to the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. And the Lord is going to show us his secrets, man. It's like how we know about these things to come, you know? So from there, this is the last set of scriptures right here. And we're going to uh, call it a night. This is Leviticus 26. And uh, we're going to start at one. It says, ye shall, ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am Yahweh, Basham Yahweh, your power. So the Lord said, what, man? Hey, 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 don't, don't learn the way of the heathen. Because that's what the heathens do, right? Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am Yahweh. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. This is pretty much uh, a, 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 a sister scripture to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the first um uh, 14 verses about if we obey then we would get these blessings and then from 15 on down if we disobeyed those was the curses was well, the same thing in this uh 26 chapter of leviticus it says uh, leviticus 26 and 4 then when i give you rain in due season and the land shall yield her increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. It says, and I will give peace in the land and ye shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land and ye shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. So basically, we wouldn't we wouldn't have nothing to lack, man. And it's the same thing uh, 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 being applied today. The Lord is dealing with us uh, 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 and guiding us and remembering his covenant through Yahweh Shai, man. Us circumcising the, the foreskin of our heart, us oh, oh, obeying uh, 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 this word to the best of our ability, you know, the Lord is taking care of us, man. We, man, man, this man, call all your how about Sham Shai, you know, it says, verse 11, and I will set my tabernacle amongst you, and my soul shall not abhor you, right? And I will walk among you, and will be your power, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord, your power, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. And it's what happened today, man. 
The Lord have had, he had, he had, he had uh, uh, bursted those mental bonds that was on us, man, and delivered us out of the hand of this devil. And the Lord is going to do it physically real soon, man, real soon as it is written. You know, Romans, uh, 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 what's that, 13 and 11? It says, now it is high time to awake out of sleep because now is our salvation nearer than what we believe, you know? Yeah, hey, I quoted it, so it's all good. It's back in Leviticus 26 and 14. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror and consumption and the burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Is this not this what happened? And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass and your strength shall be spent in vain for your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And as today, it says what, man, uh, um, uh, 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 all our labor is pretty much uh, uh, put in a bag of holes. This book of Haggai, I'll just grab it real quick. So I know I butchered it. The book of Haggai. One slot here. There we go. This is Haggai one and six. You have so much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none more. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes, man. That's our strength being in vain, man. Here it is. We're putting forth all this work, and we ain't getting nothing out of it, man. It says, verse 21, And if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, we shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your high ways shall be desolate. And you, and if you will not be reformed by these things, but will walk contrary unto me. So the Lord sent that what for, for, for a minute, man. It says scourges is sent for a minute. So these things is happening. What for, for, for Jake to repent and, and, and come back. It says that the, uh, 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 the Lord's judgment go out every morning, but the unjust knoweth no shame. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture. It says, verse 23 again, Leviticus 26 and 23. And if ye will not be reformed by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Now, all these things have happened unto us. It, it befell us, right? But in the times of Jacob's trouble, man, this thing is, man, th these things are going to come back. These plagues, these curses, it's going to come heavy on Jake, man. But those that, 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 that repent, those that circumcise their heart, those that's walking in the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, they're going to be protected in that day. The Lord is going to look upon them with favor. Why? Because he's remembering his covenant. It says, verse 25 again, I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, 10 women shall bake your bread in one oven and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And that's going into what? Famine, man. It says 10 women shall bake bread in one oven. Picture that, man. That means it's going to be uh, food is going to be very scarce, man. It says. And they shall deliver you your bread again by weight. 
what's happening, man? Uh, the second address is it speaks about uh, the blasting in the hell. You know, the, uh, 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 they're going to mourn because uh, let me let me grab that too. These are the times we enter in, man. That's why that's why we have to circumcise the foreskin of our heart. That's why our Israelite is one inwardly, man. You know, we have to get our minds right, or all these things is going to be upon us. This is second interest. It says, "Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near." Here it is, the prophets on the highways and hedges telling you what? Oh, do not do not this abominable thing that the Lord hates. So they're teaching you how to please the Lord, man. The priests are out there showing you to discern between the unclean and the clean. So you ought to take heed, man. This is second address. Uh, 15 and 13, it says, they that till the ground shall mourn for their seed shall fail through the blasting in hell and with the fearful constellation. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, you know? So, man, great calamity is, is, is about to come upon this place. So let's go back to Leviticus 26 and 27. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. And that's going to come back, man. That happened in antiquity, it's going to happen again in these times to come. It says, and I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and my soul shall afford you. In today's turn is what, man? Hey, the Lord going to destroy these churches, man. And you're going to die in these churches, man. All these people that's, that's, that's joined to these idols. Verse 31, and I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate in your cities waste. Then shall the, and, and this happened, man, we was delivered to the uh, uh, the four corners of the earth. As it is written in Deuteronomy, I believe it's 28 and 64. One of the curses says that we, we was delivered to the, uh, uh, all the kingdoms of the earth. It says, then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lieth desolate and ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword and they shall fall when none pursue it. And they shall fall one upon another as it were before a sword when none pursue it. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. That, that, that's, that's today, you know. But now it, we have our power back. Now we have Yahweh, Yahweh Shah back on our side, man. It says well, well, the hopeful elect, the, the, the remnant that's returning, according to Isaiah, the 10th chapter, right? It says... And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. If they shall confess the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land. That's why in the book of Psalms, it says this. This is Psalms, the 32nd chapter. In the fifth verse. This is Psalms 32 and 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Salah. 
That's us circumcising the foreskin of our heart, man. Us acknowledging that we sinned, us acknowledging that we fucked up, and now we're seeking the Lord 10 times more, as it says in Baruch, the fourth chapter. It says, as it was our mind to go astray, now being returned, let's seek him 10 times more. So that's why Peter said in that Acts 3, he said, what, repent that, 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 that we may be saved in the time of refreshing, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. The times of refreshing is the, is the, the, the times that we live in, in today. So those same men that repented back then is the same men that's going to repent today. And repentance is not one thing. We repent every day, man, continually repent. It said we offend less. The point is we still offend it. So then we should still ask for forgiveness because who knows if the Lord is going to forgive us, man. As it is written in the book of, uh, is that uh, Joel, the second chapter? This is uh, the book of Joel. That's why there's no pride within this thing, man. This is Joel 2 and 14. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your power? So who knows if the Lord will have mercy on us, man? You see, Judas was out there casting out uh, uh, devils. He was out there prophesying, preaching in the name of Yahweh Shah. So there's no pride within this thing, man. So it said, what if we acknowledge, if we confess and acknowledge that, that, that we fucked up and accept the punishment of our iniquity, that's why Micah says this. Let me grab that. This is the book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 9. It says, I will bear the indignation of Yahweh by Sham Yahushai because I have sinned against him. That's acknowledging that, look, man, hey, we fucked up. So therefore, hey, we got to deal with what we got to deal with, man. You know, the Lord said, I, I will not leave thee altogether unpunished, but I will punish thee in measure. Like it says in 2 Maccabees 6, it says, not with other nations who the Lord patiently forbeareth to punish, but he punishes us uh, 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 right away when we mess up, man. So to water you, how about Sham Yahushua? He chastened who he loves, as it is written. It says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness, man. So let's go back to Leviticus 26 and let's read 41 again. Let's read 40 again. It says, if they shall confess the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, right? Acknowledging that, look, man, we, we walked in the most wicked ways of all. You know? That's why Ezra was marvelous in the eyes of the Lord. Let's grab that. This is 2nd Ezra, chapter 2. In verse 48, in this also thou art marvelous before the most high and that thou has humbled thyself as it becometh thee and has not judged thyself worthy to be to be much glorified among the righteous man. You see. Knowing that, 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 that we wretched man. And knowing that we need the mercies of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. That's why in the book of Isaiah. This is Isaiah 66 and 2. It says, For all those things hath my hand made, and all those things have been, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. The word contrite means broken, man. That's why King David in Psalms, the 51st chapter, says a broken and a contrite spirit, O oh Lord, thou will not despise, man. Knowing that we have the full mercy of the Lord, knowing that, look, man, this is the only way out, man. I'm through without, without the Lord. I'm through without this, man, without this guidance, without this body, without the brotherhood. The water you how about Sham Yahushai, you know? And it says, to this man will I look. You know, uh, when you go into that word, it means to regard with care, to have favor for, man. So let's go back. Leviticus 26 and 40. If they shall confess the iniquity of their fathers 
with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept the, uh, the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity because even because they despise my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them. For I am the Lord their power, but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their power. I am Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses, man. So call Halal and Laya, Hawa Bahasham Yahweh Shai. You know, the Lord said, I have graven you upon the palm of my hands, man. It speaks about how the Lord first loved us. So to what do you how about Sham Yahushai? How are we going to pay back such mercy, such great love and kindness, man? By being obedient. By circumcising the foreskin of our heart, by applying our mind to his law, to his word, to his spirit. You know? That's what our forefathers did. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, uh, uh, Elijah, Elisha, you know? Uh, 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 Nathan, <laughs> you know, so forth and so on, man. All, all, all our righteous forefathers, you know, Obadiah and Habakkuk and Nahum, Peter, Paul, you know. So, with that, man, you know, forty-seven minutes in, man. Lord willing, this was edifying. You know, to water for you, brothers, for tuning in. Shabbat shalom, chadash, shabbat shalom. Um, give all praises, honor, glory to. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Barachah, Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us this word. And uh, peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel of truth and the sincerity, always in charity, who rightly divine the word of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings, salutations to you brothers. Shalom, man. And likewise, hey, to any uh, uh, sisters that, matter of fact, we're going to end it on this, to any sisters that may be watching as, as well, man. You know, you reform your hearts, you reform your mind as well, man. This is the book of first Peter chapter three and one. It says, likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, meaning your conduct. You conduct yourself according to the spirit of the Lord, how the Lord told you that you are supposed to act accordingly as a woman. Verse two, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair or of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, like how you see this, these women that's living in pleasure. The scripture says that she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth, man. He that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So it's the same thing. So don't worry about the outward appearance, right? It says, verse 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, the spirit, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of the Most High, of great price. Sirach speaks about a, a, a you know a, a good woman, man, and how how her um her value her value is is not is roughly paraphrasing the scripture, man. You know, it goes into how how her uh, uh her her meek mind is is invaluable, is priceless. Conduct yourself as a daughter of Israel, man. Humble, contrite, meek. You know? Apply these scriptures, man, to the best of our ability, man. Man and woman. Us men, apply it to how are we supposed to be as men of the Lord. And to the women, apply it to what the scriptures say about the woman. So, Shabbat Shalom. Lord willing, that was edifying. Anya Habatam, all you sincere Achim out there, man. Shalom.